Hello and welcome to Preparing Images for Digitizing in SoArt. This video is the second in my series of videos on learning to use the SoArt digitizing program. When digitizing a design, image preparation plays a very important role in your resulting stitch file. The better the image quality, the better your finished embroidery will be. In this video, we will cover how to use the color reduction tools, the art tools, as well as the crop and resizing tools that are included in the SoArt program. The video will be divided into three distinct segments and start times for each segment will be included in the description. I encourage you to watch each segment separately and practice what you have learned after each one, as a lot of information will be covered. You may of course use a separate photo editing program, but be aware that you may still need to use some of the tools in SoArt to make some final adjustments to the image before digitizing. The object of image preparation is to reduce the total number of colors and complicated detail as much as possible, but still retain an acceptable image. SoArt has four color reduction tools and four art tools. The color reduction tools are Posterize, Image Wizard, Color Reduction, and Merge Colors. The art tools are the brush and pencil tools, the fill bucket, and the eraser. Depending on the image, you may use any number of these tools in combination with each other, or you may use very few. It will depend on what works best for the image. As I mentioned in the introduction, there are four color reduction tools. They're right up here on the toolbar. The first one is the posterization tool. It may not be the very best choice to use for some images. Usually it's good for very highly detailed images such as photographs. Play with the settings so you can reduce the colors without losing the details. The next one is the wizard. The object when using the wizard is to use the highest settings possible that still render an acceptable image. After using the wizard, it's a good idea to use the merge color tool to be sure that speckling is removed and determine if more merging could be done. The third tool is the color reduction tool. And you'll hear me refer to it as the palette. That's just what I always seem to call it. You use this when your design is kind of touched up and ready for fine tuning. It's also very good for very simple images and also to see how many colors that you have in that image. The last color reduction tool we have is the Merge Colors tool. This allows you to combine colors together to make them one, as well as eliminate speckling, which are tiny little dots of color. We're gonna start with this image of, of a villain and these are all images that are from a website that is free domain, so they are able to be used. I can even sell these if I wish, I believe. The first thing I'm going to do is I've got this opened up, and I, you'll see down here, I've got it zoomed in so that it pretty much fills my screen so I can really see what I'm doing very well. You'll always want to zoom it in your images so that you can see what you're doing. You'll notice there's a lot of little different colored spots. You'll see that especially in this lighter red color. You see it a little bit in the white. I'm not sure if you can see that in this video or not. Um, in the cream color of the villain's face, there's a lot of it. And even in the black where you can't see it, there's still some there. We're going to look and just for the sake of understanding, we're gonna look and see how many colors are in this image. There are 256 colors in this image. We should really only have five to six colors when we're done, depending on what we do with this background. We'll have the black, we'll have the white, which is the eyes, the teeth, the shirt, and the cuffs. We'll have a cream color, which is the face and the hands. We'll have this darker tan color, which is a shading in the ear, around the eye and under the nose. There's also a little bit under the hat brim here, but I don't know that I'm gonna leave that in there. Um, we will probably merge 
the two reds together so that they become one. So the first thing I'm going to do is we'll go ahead and try the posterize tool and see if that helps us any. So I'm going to click on this and incidentally to activate a tool, you click on it. To deactivate it, you click on it again. You can also click one of the other tools to bring one of those up if it allows you to. But these toggle on and off with a click. So the first thing I do is I bring all of my sliders over to the far left. And I'm also going to grab this. This is a representation of our original image. And we're going to look and see if this is going to do us any good. I have a feeling we just did something here. We did. Let me undo that. And you could always click that undo button. Somehow when I got on here, I ended up getting a different number in there. Okay, we're back to where we started. Sorry about that. Bring the posterization tool up. I'm going to drag this bigger. And this will help you be able to tell what the original image looked like so you can compare. I'm just going to take this first slider and I'm going to move it one over. And if you look right in here under the eye and over here at the corner of this other eye where I'm pointing with my mouse, I'm going to drag the slider back. If you watch that area, that's what it originally looked like. One little click to the right on that slider really muddies that up and it, it just does not look right. So I'm not happy with that. So I'm going to undo that. We'll try the next one. Bring that over one, and again, this area here and this area up here just are not acceptable. Grab this last one, bring it over, and the same thing happens. But you also see that there's an issue with the eye up here, and it just does not look good at all. So the posterization tool for this just is not really going to help this image much. So we'll just bring everything back to the way it was. Turn off the posterization tool. I'm just going to go ahead and use the color reduction tool, and we'll see if that helps us any. We have 256. Let's bring that down to, let's say, maybe 70. And you just kind of pick a number. You don't want to go too low, too quick, but just pick a number, and you can kind and it'll give you an idea of what you need to do. That still looks pretty good. And it actually took it down to 67. So we'll go to 60. I'm just going to go down in increments of 10. And what you're looking for is you want to still have a really good, clear image. You can see as I'm doing this, we're starting to lose a lot of these little spots, especially in the face where it was really bad before. It does look, however, like we've probably lost the white between the teeth and the cream look like they might be one color now. That's okay, because what we're going to do is when we go into artwork, these are all bounded, these areas that we want to be white, they're all outlined with black. So we can color those back in very easily. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that. So let's go ahead and that's taken it down to 55. So it's actually taking a little bit more. So we'll go down to 50, I'm just gonna do even numbers here. That still looks very good. This is great. Down to 47. We'll take it down to 40. And it still looks very good. We haven't lost any detail here. We still have that shading in the ear, beside the eye, under the nose. All the outlines still look very good. Let's go ahead and take it down to 30. And that still doesn't look too bad. It actually took it down to 26. Now I think we'd be pushing it to do it by tens. So let's just take off down to 20. That's going to take off six. And that actually still looks kind of okay. We did lose a little bit right in here. 
But just for the sake of, let's just go ahead and go back up to 30. I don't want to take it too far. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm reducing, so I need to undo it. There, now we're back up to 26. Let me undo it one more time. It just, it just looks a little cleaner that way. And like I said, just keep going until you go a little too far and then just back up with that undo tool. Just don't undo too far or you may undo the entire tool. Okay, so we are at 40, which isn't bad considering we were at 256. Next, we'll run this through the wizard tool and see what we get with that. I'm going to click the wizard tool and we get a little box that comes up here. Just read all the instructions in the box if you get lost. We're going to click the next because there's nothing to do at this point. You'll see that our original image came up over here on the left and it shows us at the very top how many colors we have. And unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to zoom this um, image in. If there is a way to do it, I haven't found it yet. Um, it would be very helpful if it was larger, but unfortunately this is what we're working with. So the first thing I do is I click on the first button down that has not been clicked yet, and that will bring up the next image, and then I just go right back to the original one. The reason for that is I want to be able to look at the changed image as I click each of these buttons, and it's not up there yet, so that just allows me to get that image up there. So I'm going to hover my mouse button over the top of the next button down. And I'm going to focus my attention on the image that's on the right. That's the one that's going to change. And I'm just going to watch for anything to change there. So I'm going to go ahead and click the button and watch. And it still looks good. I didn't see anything that changed that was bad. And you'll notice over here that we've already gotten it down to 26 colors, which is great. I'm going to hover over the next button, watch the image, click, and you'll notice, I'll go back and forth and do this, but I'm going to draw to your attention that we've lost the shading underneath the eye, inside the ear, under the nose, and up around the, underneath the hat. I'm going to click this back and forth, and you can do this if you're not sure if you saw something. You just click back and forth between two of your selections. And then you can just watch the image and you'll see that the, that shading is all back. It's very hard to see on this very small image. But as I click the next one, I've lost that detail. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the where it says 30, which takes us down from 40 down to 26 colors, which is still very good. So that's as far as I want to take this particular box. I'm going to go ahead and click the next button. And again, I'm going to click that first button and then go right back to where it says original image. And I'm going to hover over the first button and I'm going to focus my attention on that image on the right as I click. And I did not see anything change. Go down to the next button. Focus my attention on that image and click. And it still looks very good. I'm going to go down to the next button and focus my attention on that right image. And that still looks good. Go to the next column. And I'm going to focus my vision on that image. Click the next button. Focus my attention on the image and click. And it still looks very good. And you'll notice over here, we're now down to eight colors. I'm going to hover over the next button, keep going with it, focus my attention on that image. And again, now we've lost that shading and it looks like we've probably lost the, the cream and the white, which really isn't a big deal, but um, we've lost that shading, which I do want. So we're going to go ahead and go back up one and you'll see that it's come back there and that's where I'm going to leave that. Whenever you're working with this, just play with the, the um, settings and go back and forth as many times as you need. You don't want to go too far. You can always come back and go through the wizard again. The object of using this is to use the highest setting, but you don't want to lose your detail and your good quality image. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click the next button since we're as far as we can take this screen and click that first one and go back to the original. And I'm going to hover over that first button again, just like I did on all the other screens. And I'm going to watch the image and I'm going to click and that still looks good. I'm going to hover over the next button, watch the image, and that just went completely wonky. Um, it's just not a good quality image, and I'm not at all happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and go back up to the 156 and we'll leave that one at this. And we'll go ahead and click Next. And you see a Finish button here, so you know that you're almost done. Go ahead and click the first button, go back to the original so you can watch what it changes to. We're going to hover over that first button. I'm going to watch the image and click. It still looks good. I'm going to hover over the next button, watch the image and click. It still looks good. Hover the next button, look at the image and that still looks good. Go to the next column. Hover over the button, look at the image, and click, and we're still good. And even though I've clicked several of these buttons, we're still at eight colors, but that's okay because it's still getting rid of a little bit of stuff. I'm going to hover over the next button, watch the image, and that still looks good. And hover over the next one, and you'll see we're down to seven. Hover over the next one. Look at the image and click. And this one, the outlines, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it or not, but the outlines have gotten a lot of red in it and it just does not look good at all. So let's go ahead and take that back to the 195. I'll click back and forth so maybe you can see the red and see the change in the image. And also we ended up losing the shading as well, which is not what we wanted to do. So I'll go back to that 1.95%. And we've gotten that down to the seven colors, which is fantastic. This now looks good, so we'll go ahead and click the Finish button. And you'll see it's really starting to get simplified. There still has some work to do, but it's getting there. The next tool we're going to use is the very last tool, and that's the Merge Colors tool. You just click that to turn it on, and over here on the side, You'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. There's our seven colors. Each of those color blocks has a number underneath it. That is the percentage that, of that color that is in that image. You'll see here that we have three reds. Well, really, we're pretty sure we only have two or should only have two. This one right here that is next to the black and between the red is actually, it may not be able to see it on your screen very well. It's Kind of a very, very, very dark red. And then we have the tan, and then we have a whitish color. And now you may be able to see that our skin and our teeth are the same color. Again, for this image, I'm not really worried about that because I know I can go back and use my um, art tools and fix that. And you could also fix that when you're actually stitching out the design too. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is this color right here, I suspect is probably going to be a black color or something that's around the outside between the red and the black. If you click on each of those color blocks, it will show you what those colors are in the design. And as I suspected, these are the outline between the red and the black. And actually some of them aren't even between the red and the black. So these are really all outline and they should be black. So let's go ahead and we'll make those black. And this is how you do that. These buttons with the colors all toggle on and off just like the tools do. So I'm going to click it again to get my regular image back. And as I'm looking at this, now I can see that red in there. And we want to get that so that it's all black. So here's how, if you were just to tell it just to merge things. It's going to merge things with whatever it wants to merge things with that are the closest in color value. In this case, 
It might merge with the black, it might merge with the red, but we know we want it to go with the black. So here's how you do that. We know we want to put this 499% in with the 27.39% black. So what we're going to do is we are going to, from having all of the image visible, not from it being selected like that, you click that to turn it off. This is just so you can see what there is. We're going to press and hold the shift key on the keyboard. Then we're going to click that color block. Then we're going to go up here to this merge button and we're going to click merge and it's saying click a color button to merge with. So the very next thing that you cl click over here is going to be what you merge that first selected color into. So we'll say okay and I want all of this very dark red to be combined with the black. So if I click black that 27.39 is now 32.38 and that other color has been eliminated. That really cleaned up the design. It looks a lot better so far and we still have some ways to go here. Now let's look at the red. I don't intend to stitch out the red as part of my design so I really don't need to have this lighter color red circle and the separate darker red. So I'm going to make that all one color. Let's take a look at what these colors each are. The first one is the background color. The next one over is the red inner circle. And the third one over is more outliney stuff. So let's first take the background and that inner circle and combine those so that they're all one color. In this case, it doesn't really matter which one you merge into the other. I'm just going to go ahead and take the one that has less and merge it into the one that has more. So I'm going to unselect that. And as I did before, I'm going to my keyboard and I'm pressing this and holding the shift key while I click this one red. That one right there is the one that I will merge. Releasing the shift key, then I'm going to go up and tell it I want to merge. And I'm going to say, yep, okay. Then I, the very next button I click over here is going to be what color I merge this one that I already clicked into. So I want that to go into that background color, which we already determined was a 34%. So I click that. Now my background is solid red. This also helps you see all of this color, all of this other red, really should be part of this red. If you look at the design, if you were to make that black, you would have just a mess. The mustache would be wide on the ends and it just, it everything would just be mush. It just would not have a nice, clear, crisp outline. So we know that we want to merge these two reds together rather than that red, even though it looks like an outline, into the other red. So the 2.26% will be merged into the 53.19. And I could do it the other way if I wanted. It just means that my background color would be that lighter red. And like I said, I'm not stitching it. I don't care. So we are going get it to the point where nothing is selected like that. Just by toggling it off, I'm going to go to the keyboard. I'm going to press the shift key, click my first color, release the shift key, click merge, tell it OK, and then I know that I wanted to go into that 53%. So I click that and there we go. We have this design now down to four individual colors. Those four individual colors actually are five individual colors because remember that the face and the teeth, the eyes, the shirt, and the cuffs all got kind of mushed together. The next thing we'll do is in this same tool, we're going to check and see if there's any speckling. When I show you what the speckles are, it will become very obvious. We're just going to click on each color 
and we don't see any little outlying black dots anywhere. So the black looks good. Let's click the red. And in here, you can see there's a little speckle of red right here. There's a little speckle of red there. There's one there. And there's a couple down here. There's no red in the villain itself. So we do not really want those spots in there. So while we have this selected, I'm going to click this do speckle button up here. And if you watch this button or this spot, this spot, that spot, and these couple down here, as I click this, I'll undo it so you can watch it again. Those disappear. And you'll notice that it kind of cleaned up a few other little spots. There's probably some speckles up in there too. I'm going to go ahead and undo that for you. I'm going to go back in. This is just so you can see it happen again. Watch over here as I click the do speckle button. That cleaned those right up. So those will not be an issue. When I go to the next color, wow. This is the tan color that's the shading of the ear, under the eye, and under the nose. The only parts that I really want are those three spots and possibly that shadow that's under the brim of his hat that's right up here where I'm pointing with, with my mouse. Those are the only things I want. These are, let me go back and un, undo this. You can see right in here there's a little bit of this tan color all the way around the outside of that lighter color. Well, we don't want those in there because if you go try to stitch that, you're going to end up having either a gap between the black and the cream because there was those little pixels left in there. Or if you actually create stitches for that color, you're going to have this oddball little shading thing all the way around. And it's really not necessary for this design. So I'm going to go ahead and click that color again so that we can see what we've got here. And let's see what happens when we click the despeckle. Now remember, we still want the shading right here under the eye. We want this little spot over here in the ear. And we want this little part under the nose and possibly this line up here that was under his hat. Watch the image as I click the despeckle button. Okay, we still have the brim or the shadow from the brim of the hat. We still have this area from under the eye in the ear and this part was under the nose. We still have a couple other spots though. Let's go ahead and click the despeckle button one more time and see what happens. This got a little smaller, but we got rid of some of those others, but we may not want this to be that small. So let me go ahead and undo that and we'll go back in. So now we have all those spots back. You'll notice that my mouse pointer is changed to a little square whenever I'm in within the image. When I'm over here in the blue, my mouse pointer is the regular arrow. That little square is actually a little tool. It's an eraser. If you go over to your image, and we know we don't want this, click your left mouse button and draw over the top of it. It will erase those little individual pieces. I'm going to go ahead and leave the shadow from the hat because I'm not sure if I want it yet. We'll decide that later. And we can fix that up in Art Tools later if we decide we want to continue it all the way across or if we want to eliminate it, eliminate it altogether. So that one's taken care of. And now I'm going to click the white color. And it not being a full white, it's actually a cream you can really see in here against the white background. There's a couple little speckles up here in the inside of the ear. And you have to look really close. So let's go ahead and despeckle this as well. I'm going to go watch the image as I do this, particularly right here inside the ear. And it took care of that. It also cleaned up things just a little bit. So I'm going to click that off. And there's our image. That actually looks very, very good. And it's just about ready for some digitizing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just go ahead and do a save as on this. Always do a save as on your images so you still have your original image left to play with if you need to. I'm going to do file. Whoops, I need to get out of the tool. Sorry about that. You always need to close your tools when you're done with them. Click file and then save as. 
I'm just going to go ahead and put mine in a different folder. You'll notice that the file format is now a TIF. That is the file format that SOAR is going to want to digitize from. So that's how I'm going to know which one's that and the fact that I have it in a separate folder. So I'm going to go ahead and save that one. And that one is saved. And I'm going to go File, Close, and we're done with the villain. I'm going to go ahead and open another image. There's my villain right there in the folder ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and open this dinosaur and bring him up on the screen. And we'll get that enlarged with the zoom tool here. Go just a little bit more. I want to make it as big as I can. There we go. Okay. We're first thing we're going to do, just like the other one, just for the sake of curiosity, is um, click the little palette up here, which is the um, color reduction tool. And we see that there are 255 colors in this little guy. Just, that's just for our inf information. We really should end up having maybe seven when we're done. The first thing I'll do, just like I did with the other one, is I'm going to go and open the posterization tool. You can already see that things aren't looking very good, and but the sliders all slide over. Bring everything all the way back so that nothing is being done to it. I'm going to slide the very first slider over, and that does not help that image at all. So let's undo that, go down to the next one, slide that over, that's not helping it either. Go down to the next one, slide it over, and that's not helping either. So right off the bat, we know that the posterization tool is not going to help this guy. So we'll go ahead and close that. Let's go into the wizard and see if that will help us. Just like before, we have a box that comes up. Just go ahead and click the next button. And remember in the other one, I just clicked that first button and went right back to my original just so that I'm able to actually see the change happen over here. It's easier for your eye to pick it up than trying to compare images. We'll go ahead and hover over that first button. And we're going to focus on that image on the right. And we're going to click. And I did not see any visible change. But look at what we've gotten. We're down to 186 colors from 255 with one click. Let's hover over the next button, focus on the image on the right, and click. I did not see any change over here, but we're down to 122. Let's hover over the next button, focus on the image, and click. And I did not see any change here. So we're going to go ahead and hover over the next button and we'll focus on that image and we'll click and I didn't see any change here. We're now down to 63 colors. Let's see if it'll go one more. Let's hover over the next button, focus on the image and click. Now on this one, we've lost the darker green in the spots and that was also the same color for the back front arm and the back leg. So we don't want to we don't want to lose that just in case we decide we want to keep it and it's going to make doing these spots a lot easier if we have that as a separate color now. So let's go ahead and take it back one. We'll leave it at 63 for this particular screen. And we'll go ahead and click next. Click the first button and go back to original. And let's hover over that first button. Focus on that image and click. And I didn't see any change there. Hover over the next button. Focus on the image and click. Now this one I saw just a little bit of change here in the tongue. There's a darker pink on this side that's the actual tongue and probably this lighter pink that you probably cannot see because it's so tiny is probably the inside of his lip. Let's go ahead and go to the next one and see what that does. Hover over that next button, focus on the image, and click. Now we've lost more detail in the, in the tongue. Let's just go ahead and go back to the point two zero, and we'll call that good. And we'll go ahead and click Next. 
and go ahead and click on the first one, go back to the original, and hover over that first button again, focus on the image, and click. Now that just completely lost it. That one's going to have to stay with the original image. So we'll just go ahead and click next. And you see that finish button, you know you're almost done. Let's go ahead and bring the first one up and go back to the original. And hover over that first button, focus on the image, and click. I didn't see any change there. And we'll hover over that button, the next button, and we'll focus on the image again and click. Didn't see anything change there. Let's keep going. Hover over the next button, focus on the image on the right, and click. Now I just lost detail in that tongue again. So we're going to go ahead and go back to this 0.13 and then we'll click finish. We'll leave it at that. But we've gotten that image down from 255 colors down to 24. So that is very good. And it looks pretty clean, at least in this small image that I can see. So we'll go ahead and click finish. You can see that this has been simplified a lot. There's still some cleanup work to do, but it's not too bad. Next, we'll go into the Merge Colors tool, just like we did before. And if we remember right, this had 24. Yes, this has 24. So we have all of our little individual colors up here. And you'll see that the background looks pretty good. We still have a lot of spots in this green and this green, a lot of spots in this green. This blue looks pretty good. There's a few little spots up here in, in the face. The red has some speckles in it. But this outline just does not look very good at all. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through, let's just pick the reds to start with. Let's just, this one's a red, so we'll look at that. Okay, that looks like that looks like outline. So let's go ahead, and the outline as we know is black. So let's go ahead and merge that dark red. Hold the, unselect it, hold the shift key, click that dark red, release the shift key, click merge, tell it okay. And we know we want that to be black. So go ahead and click black. And you'll see that that actually helped that, that outline a little bit there. Let's pick another red, one that doesn't have very much. And it's okay to keep clicking these back and forth so you can kind of focus on what these are supposed to be. That looks like it's probably outline as well. So let's go ahead and merge that. I'm going to hold the shift key, click the color I want to merge, release the shift key, click the merge, click OK, and we want that to be black. And you see that that black outline has gotten a lot better. Now we have two reds left. Let's see what they are. There's that red, and there's that red. And I really think those two reds should be together. Rather, even though this looks like it could be outline, if we went outline now, we would have a really, really heavy outline, which we don't want. And this is something that's just going to take practice and experience to figure out what works. Just remember, you've always got that undo key. If you make a mistake, just click it. It will take you back several steps if you need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and merge the one that doesn't have as much into the bigger one. It, at, at this point, it doesn't really matter what, what of these two reds are kept, so I don't. it doesn't matter. So I'm going to hold the shift key, click the red, click the merge, click OK, and I'm going to click this other red to merge it into. So now we have all of our reds as one. You'll notice that also took care of the nose and the eye. So now we have one red color. That's great. Let's look at some of these darker colors. This one up here looks like it's probably outlined. There's a little bit there, a little bit around the eye, around the nose, a little bit around the 
what I think is the mouth and a few little outlying speckles, but most of it's out here around his little, uh, so let's go ahead and merge that into black. I'm going to, I'm going to hold the shift key, click that color, release the shift key, merge, tell it okay, and then black. And that still looks good. Pick another color. Okay. Now this one is pretty much outlining this whole dinosaur. I'm going to unselect it. And yes, that is that is outlined too. It's a very, 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 very dark green. So we're going to merge that into the black. Again, unselect it so everything's ready. Hold the shift T and click it. Merge. Okay. And then the color you want to merge it into. And you see that we've now lost that color up here. And this is starting to fill in a little bit. We'll go to the next one. Again, this is all little spots of outlining so we'll unselect it shift key click merge okay color you want to go to and you see how we're reducing the number of colors at this point 5 10 15 16 we've got 18 now instead of 24. so it's getting there we'll click on that next one if you were just to select that color and then click merge without holding the shift key, it will merge that color into whichever color is closest to it in the RGB scale, which probably would be this gray over here because they're very close colors. Doing it this way, you can do that, but you may not end up with the result that you want. Doing it this way, it allows you to choose what color that particular color should go into. So I believe that is all stuff that should be black. I'm looking at it again. Yes, it should be. I'm going to hold the shift key, click that color, click merge, click OK, and then click the black. You'll see my percentage of black is getting higher. Next, we'll go to the next color. Again, this looks like it's all outlined. I'm going to merge that one. Right in there and you see that just went up and now we've got a lot of greens and I think that's where we need to go next actually we'll look at that blue first no we won't sorry um, let's look at all these greens let's find where the dominant color is that's gonna be this one right here at this point you need to make a decision what you wanted to do about those front legs and the back legs because you see they're not showing here those are one of these other colors we can find it there they are so these two colors are close together and you see all of these little spots in here so that one still has a lot of little speckling to be taken care of so if you wanted to keep those legs a darker color you would just end up having to merge everything. Like those are spots that go into it. So that one there would go into this one. You see how those two are the same thing. So let's go ahead and merge that one into it. Shift. And it was this one right here. And you see how that cleaned that up. But yet we still have the two different shades, even though it's hard, hard to see. Okay. You'll notice that this color is also the spots. If we were to merge this into one of the other colors, we're going to end up losing our colors of our spots. So let's not do anything with that at this time. Let's take a look at what this, what this is. If you look right here, Hopefully you can see my mouse pointer. And right here and right here, as I click these on and off, that's the outline for those spots. If I merge this into black, that probably will work because I want the outlines around those spots to be black. 
So that's the one. I'm going to merge that into black, even though it's a green. This image was not a very good quality image, so we're kind of making our own little magic with it. So I'm going to shift, click the color I want to merge, merge, OK, and we want that to go black. And then take a look at it. Does it look OK? We've gotten a lot more definition in our circles around the outlines around the spots, which is good. That's what we want. That one is some of our outline as well, even though it's kind of a light sagey green color. So let's go ahead and merge that. Okay, that still looks pretty okay. Let's go to another green. That one is the one that has the spot, so we don't want to change that. That's the one that has the other color for the legs. That one's the main body. And there's some more... green that should be part of the, now this should be part of the body. You see that this isn't the front leg in the, in the, the front arm and the back arm. I'm sorry, the back arm and the back leg. Um, it's more kind of the inside outline. So we're going to, we're going to want to merge that into the green because it's all kind of inside this line here. Okay, so let's go ahead and shift, click, merge, and okay. And then we're gonna put it into this green. That gets rid of that. And we're getting closer here. We've got pinks. And it looks like we have a couple of pinks here, and one of them is just a little bit of mouth. And one's a lot of the mouth. So let's see what happens when we merge those two. We'll go ahead and merge this lighter pink into the darker. And that still looks okay. And let's keep going. Let's pick another color. Okay, now we have all these little light tan colored spots. Let's try to see what those are. That looks like a border between the black and the white. Let's go ahead and merge those into the white. I think that just makes sense. Or you can click to speckle and we'll Actually, maybe we'll do that. I think that might make more sense. So I think we've kind of gotten this pretty close here. Let's see. Um, we still have some work to do, though. And the white, you're not going to be able to see. Um, I think what we'll do now is we'll just do work on some despeckling to despeckle, and the blue is a good example. If you click on the blue, you see all these little outlying little dots, and I kind of touched on this on the villain. We're just going to go ahead and despeckle that. We want to make sure that these large areas stay just like they are, and that cleaned that up. One thing I have noticed, though, is that if you end up doing a despeckle, sometimes little spots will come back. So go in between some of the other colors and then come back to ones that you've already done. Um, I'm not sure why that happens, but it just seems to. Let's click on this one. Let's see what happens when we despeckle that. Let's take a look at it, and I'm seeing those little blue spots right along the outline. We'll go ahead and click that color. We'll click the speckle. Still have a little bit down here, as I mentioned before with the villain. Just go ahead and use your mouse pointer as an eraser. 
and that color ended up disappearing. But look at what happened to our outline. That may not have been the best choice. So let's go ahead and click undo. And then we have that back. And even though that outline wasn't the greatest at that point, oops, I still I have that little 0.01. I need to go back one more time. There we go. Okay, now we have the 0.52. So maybe we want to go ahead and merge that into the black. Let's go ahead and see what happens with that. And again, as I've said before, this is all trial and error. Unselect it, shift key, select it, merge, okay, and black. That looks that one looks okay. And we'll go to each of them in turn. And this color really all we want is the spots. So let's go ahead and despeckle this. And everything looks pretty good. We still have some in the legs. And this one definitely needs some despeckling. This is that front leg and the back leg. And there's some odd little oddball speckles in there. We'll go ahead and despeckle that. That looks better. And here, there's some little speckles outlying out here. Go ahead and despeckle. That looks much cleaner. And that was that was that color. We'll look at this one. Let's go ahead and do a despeckle on that one and see what happens. You can also change the range, but I found that the default seemed to be just about right. So it's probably best just at least while you're learning just to leave those alone. We'll go ahead and despeckle that. And you can see the, the outline's a little choppy, but remember this was not a great image to start with. The pink definitely needs to be despeckled also. We don't want to merge it because if we merged, we would lose the pink tongue inside of the mouth. So we'll go ahead and despeckle, and now all we have left is that. Turn that off. It's getting there. Do this light tan, and we'll go ahead and despeckle that as well. And that totally eliminated that color. But let's look at this image now. I have a very choppy, non-filled in outline. It's very heavy here. It's very thin in places. I'm not really sure that I'm happy with the way this has come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up all of those steps and I'm just not even going to bother using the merge tool on this. Yes, we spent a little bit of time doing this, but it's better to understand that the final image is the ultimate goal here. I'm not happy with that image, so I'm just going to keep going right on back and you'll see over on the right hand side as I'm clicking this undo button, my colors are coming back. So it's undoing things and I, I like this image better. And there's nothing saying you have to take one tool as far as it will go. Use the tools in conjunction with each other to, to get the, the result that you desire. That's the ultimate goal here. Okay, that went too far. Unfortunately, they do not have a redo button. So I just completely undid all of my previous tool, which I believe was the color reduction tool. Uh, I'm back to 255, I'm back to my original image. So we know the posterization tool didn't work. And you can save as you go and reload your image. And if you're playing with it, it's probably not a bad idea to do that. Um, we know the posterization did not work. And then after that, we went to the wizard. So I'm just going to zip through the wizard really quickly. And if I remember correctly, we had 63 colors on this first screen. I'm just going to zip through real quick and make sure. 31. That looks the best to me. And we'll go to 0 0.20, which should be up. And 
and that's that one didn't do anything for us so we'll leave that as original and let's see where we get with this one okay that was 0.13 for that one and we are at our 24 which is where we were so we'll just go ahead and leave it that way and at this point we're back to where we were at the 24 colors and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and save this image as it is with the 24 colors and we'll come back to it when we go to the art tool section. So we'll go ahead and save it. We'll do a save as and we want it in that folder and it's going to be that TIF and we'll go ahead and save it and now I'm going to go ahead and close and we're going to do one more image. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. And it's this little cartoon happy face. First thing you want to do is bring it in and you want to zoom it in so you can really see what you're doing. Okay, that looks pretty good. This one, we're going to, again, open it and see how many colors. We have 255 colors. And if you look at this image, it's pretty simple. We should have white. We should have black and we should have yellow. And remember that the background color is, even with it just being white, is still a color. So if you're thinking how many colors you should have, remember that even though the eyes are white here, you still have white over here. And I can tell that those are two different colors of white. So we're going to want to get this down to three colors, white, yellow, and black. So the first thing we'll do is we'll jump into that posterization tool. I'm going to grab all these sliders and bring them right back over. I'm going to make my image larger so I can see what the original look like. And I'm just going to start moving this over. Okay, I'm not seeing any change in my design here, so I'm just going to keep on going. And if you get to a point where it's too much, you just back it off some. Okay, that went all the way to 100 without degrading that image. Let's go to the next slider. A little bit at a time. Okay, now you can see, watch, watch the outline around the eyes. It's actually making that outline better for me, which is great. Less artwork for me to have to do. It's combining all of those colors. So I now have one color. Oh, that's too far. So let's back it off a little bit. Okay, I just backed it off one little notch and we have a good image. You'll notice also that this black here, this black here are the same, but this is more of this outline around the eyes and the eyebrows are more of a dark gray. That's not a problem. Just keep on going. Now using this bottom slider, you notice the first little notch that I went over, watch this little left portion of this eye. One little click over and I've lost outline. So I don't think I wanna do that. We'll leave that over there. And so in this case, the posterization tool actually helped us. and helped us in a pretty good big way here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the posterize tool and let's go ahead and go into the wizard. We'll go just like before, we'll go ahead and hit this next button and we'll hit the first one and come back so we can see what we're doing. And you'll see here that we're actually down to seven colors from 255 colors just from using the posterization tool. Let's see if we can get this down to those three. So the first thing we'll do is we'll click the first button and take a look at that image as you're doing it. And you'll see that this darker white has changed to the bright white, which is the same one as the background. So that's great. So we're down to six. Let's keep going and see what we get. Go down to five and I don't see any change there. Okay, when I click down to four colors, you'll see that this yellow changes to a slightly grayish colored yellow instead of this bright, and that's okay. 
All we care is that it's the same color at this point. I'll click back and forth so you can see it change. And we'll try this three and see what happens. Now that's way too far. That's not going to help us any. So we'll go back to the four. And we know that that one's okay, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And this one, we'll go ahead and bring that first one up and go back so we can watch it as it changes. And we'll click. And not sure if I saw, so we'll go back and look. Remember, you're focusing on this image on the right as you're hovering over, ready to click. I did not see any change there. I'm going to hover over the next button, focus on the image, and click. I still did not see any big change there. I'll go to the next one. I didn't see any change. The next one, I didn't see anything there. Go to 3.20, and we'll hover over that and focus on that image. I did not see any change there. And we'll hover over this very last one, focus on the image, and click. And I didn't see anything there either, so we've gotten that one as far as it will go. Go ahead and click the next button, click the first one, and bring it back. You'll notice we're down to those three colors. That's exactly what we wanted. But even though we are down to the needed three colors, we're going to keep on going because this is going to clean up the image a little bit more than what we can actually see. And if you don't like it, you can always back up. So let's go ahead and click the 1.56. And I didn't see any change there. And I didn't see any change with that one. We'll back up so we can double check it. Go to the next one, hover over it, and watch that image on the right. And I didn't see anything there. We'll go to this next one, hover over it, and watch. Okay, now as I click this, my eye picked up this little spot right here in the outline of the eye. I'll click back and forth so you can see it. This little spot right there is missing when I click that one. You'll see it comes back and it goes away right there. And I bet if I go further, I don't see much change. But I, I, I want to make sure that outline stays there. Less artwork for me, have to do, for me to have to do later. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that 6.25. And we'll go ahead and go to the next screen. You see that finish button? We're almost done. Go back to the original. And we'll click and watch. Hover over, watch, and click. I don't see anything change there. Hover over the next one. Watch this, the image on the right and click. Hover over the next one, watch and click, and I still don't see any change. That's good. Hover over the next one, watch the image on the right, and click. I still don't see any change. Hover over the next one, watch the image, and click. I still don't see any change. Hover over the next one, watch the image, and click. And that's obviously we don't need to see much with that one. That one's way too far, so we'll go ahead and back up one. And we'll go ahead and click Finish. That's as far as that's going to take us. This is the design that has only been through the posterization tool and the wizard. And this is now down to three colors. And only needs, in my opinion, only needs a very, very small amount of artwork. I think I probably would just darken that line, make that line just a little wider so that it's really easy for the program to pick up that that's supposed to be outlined. Is that there's that one little spot right there and it may be hard for the, the program to make a connection between those two. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Do a save as, always do save as is. And I'm going to put that in my folder. And I have a feeling I didn't put the dinosaur in the folder, but that's okay. And now it's saved. And now I can close that design. And now we have three images that are ready for artwork and for cropping or resizing if necessary. Some of them will need more artwork than others. 
and note that it was a different combination of tools that were used to get each of these images cleaned up. And that in the case of the dinosaur, many of the color reduction tools weren't even necessarily the best option. For the villain, we used the color reduction tool, the wizard, and the merge colors tool, but we didn't use the posterization tool. For the dinosaur, we only used the wizard. Because remember, I went back out of the merge colors and decided I didn't like the way it came out. So we ended up just going through the wizard just to get some of it cleaned up. For the cartoon face, we use the posterization tool and the wizard. So it's always a, a different blend of what's going to work best for which image. In the next segment of the video, we're going to cover using the art tools. In this segment of the video, we will focus on the art tools included in SoArt. We will work on each of the three images that we began in the color reduction segment using the tools as needed to bring the images closer to being optimal for digitizing them into a stitch file. We'll begin with the villain. First, we have the four tools up here on the toolbar. I'll point them out. There's the paintbrush, the pencil tool. These tools are very, very similar. I'll show you the difference between the two here in a moment. We have the bucket tool or the fill region tool, and we have the eraser. The eraser actually will work somewhat as a pencil tool as well, and it can be very, very precise. So if you have an area that really needs some very, very detail-oriented changes, you can possibly use the eraser to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our image and see what we might want to do with this. Remember in the color reduction segment, I had left this kind of dark tan color here that's the shadow of the brim of his hat. And I wasn't sure if I was going to leave that. And I think I will. But you'll notice this outline of his eye kind of goes up into that. And that section is really, really thick right there. So let's go ahead and change that little section right there that's black into this tan color. And that will extend that shadow line of this brim all the way across. And it will clean up that eye as well. So the first thing we'll do, we're going to use the pencil tool for this because it's a, little, it's a lot more precise than the brush tool. The brush tool is used more for filling an area similar to the bucket, but you would actually paint it in rather than it just generally just dumping a bunch of color in. So we'll go ahead and click the pencil tool and you'll see we get some options over here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick the color that we want to draw in. And this little dropper tool right here, you'll see that in the other tools as well. You click that and then you'll see that when I bring that over, the mouse pointer over into the image that it ends up becoming a little eyedropper. So these two colors are the same, just this one's a little bigger. So I'm going to go, actually, I'll do it over here in the ear so you can see it. I'm just going to click right there. And then you'll notice as soon as I click, my mouse pointer turns into a little pencil. That means that I have selected that color. And then we're going to go over here and look at what our options are. In this case, I want to draw freehand pixels. This is going to allow me to draw wherever I want to draw. The line, I will show you later, it will allow you to create a straight line from one point to another. And the rectangle outline and the elliptical outline, elliptical is circular. Um, those will both allow you to create circles or rectangles. Um, if you were drawing your own image, that would probably be um, something you would use in that. Probably not so much for editing an existing image at this point. Um, the items down here are the width that your pencil will draw. This is like the size of the lead in the pencil. It goes from the very, very smallest with this one that I'm pointing to here and goes right on down to very thick. And for this point, we really want the smallest one. The one thing to remember is that the paintbrush and pencil tools are proportionate to the zoom level. That means that they will always stay the same relative size as you zoom in or out of the design. 
With the eraser tool, it is not proportionate. So when you zoom in with that tool, you will be able to do much finer detailed editing. And we'll go over the eraser tool later in the video. So this line is always going to stay the same size no matter what your zoom is. So I'm gonna just come over here and I'm gonna get rid of, first of all, get rid of that little spot of black. And then I'm gonna very, you have to have a very steady hand doing this in, in most cases. I'm going to go ahead and just very carefully draw slowly and carefully right straight across. And you'll see that that has really cleaned up the, the brim of the hat. I'll clean that up just a little bit more. Um, that's really cleaned up the brim of the hat quite a bit. And it also has cleaned up the eye. And if I want to, I can actually come in here and take a little bit more of that black outline out. Um, and I can even use a different color to do that. So if I want the brim to be there and then I want a little bit of white up there, I can do that. Um, I think it looks good just like it is. So we're going to go ahead and go down here to this area right between his eye and the mustache. It's just one big black blob. So there's no definition between the outline of his eye and the mustache. And we do really want to have that. So I'm going to actually go ahead and click a different color. I'm going to do the face color in this case. And we may come back in later, possibly, if we want to, and add a little bit of shading. So I'm going to go ahead and click the color of his face and the pencil changes. And again, with a very steady hand, go very slow, take your time. There is also the undo button if you need to do that. You can click and hold the mouse, the left mouse button as you drag your pencil across. Or if you have just a little spot, as you saw that I had right there, and actually I'll show you another one, you can click individual spots. Um, with a click, click, click um, to remove it. Um, so you can see how that has really helped this image quite a bit. And I think I may go ahead and go in and do a little adjustment to this shading up here and just add just a little bit. Whoops, that didn't work out well for me. I got it in the wrong spot. So I'm going to go up here to my undo button, click undo, grab, make sure I've got my color, and and here I'm doing the little click, 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 individual clicks, because I want to be very precise about where I'm putting this. There, that looks a little better. It's, it's kind of tapered that out a little bit, so it's not quite so blunt. And now we will come over and grab the color picker again, the little eyedropper, and I'm going to come down here into his teeth and remember that that was the same color as the face at this point, but Whenever you're doing a different section, it's a great idea to get in the habit of going and picking a different color so you don't accidentally get the wrong one in there. And we've got this little spot right here that's by his teeth, and I think it would look better if that was cleaned up. So I'm just using the individual, clicking, a, clicking the spot, and just three little clicks, that little spot's gone. So that looks pretty good. And now remember that the face and the teeth and the eyes and the shirt and the cuffs were all the same color. We're going to fix that at this point. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off my pencil tool at this point. And I'm going to go into my color palette here so that you can see I have four colors at this time. That's the black, the red, the dark tan, and the whitish color, cream color that is the eyes and the face and everything. So I'm going to I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. I'm actually going to add a color. So I'm going to go up here to my bucket tool, knowing that these are all cleaned up and we don't have any little funky little spots in there or anything. I'm going to go up to my bucket tool. And again, there's that little eyedropper again. And I'll explain this information down here in another design. In this case, I'm going to click my color picker, my eyedropper, and I'm going to go down to this little color palette down here, and I'm going to select white because that's the color that I want those to be. And you can change, just for the sake of your digitizing, you can change the teeth to purple if you want to. Um, this will also help you be able to differentiate different sections of your design as well. But in this case, we're going to select white. And 
now we have this little bucket tool up here and you'll notice that there's a little blue drip of paint coming out of the out of the bucket the very tip of that drip of paint is the spot where the color will be applied so it's not the whole bucket if i were to do it here i would be painting the lines between the teeth in white so you want to have that little blue point of the paint in the area that you want to fill so we know that that's a tooth that's a tooth that's a tooth that's a tooth and that's a tooth so let's go ahead and fill the the teeth in you may not be able to see this very well because the colors are very similar but you can't you can kind of see it as i click each section click that one and i'm just clicking my left mouse button and that's changing that entire section's color and remember the eye the eyeballs are white as well both of those and then we have his shirt collar and the front of his shirt beside his tie and then we have his cuff and we have the other cuff down here so at this point i'm not sure if i got that one so let's do that again to be sure okay so at this point we now should have five colors so let's go ahead and turn off the bucket tool and we'll go ahead and go into the little palette and sure enough we have five colors and I can also show you doing the same thing. Just going in here and we'll pick purple and we'll make his cuffs purple. Oops, That's, that was a case where I did not get the little paint spot up, coming out of the bucket in the right spot. So I'm gonna click undo and be a little more precise there. Be very careful on these smaller areas. So now you can see we have purple cuffs, and this would be useful if you wanted to stitch those in different colors in your design or have the option to do them, or if you wanted those to be separate sections that stitch separately so that you can change those colors later if you wish, even if you intend to stitch those as the same color. Um, if you use the auto sew color feature on this program this will allow you to keep those separate even if you use the auto sew color and we'll go over that later in a different video so if i go up to turn off my bucket and go in you'll see now i have six colors so i'm going to go ahead and cancel i'm going to go ahead and undo that and undo that one and that's how you would change entire sections of color and now we're gonna go ahead and this, I know it's part of the original design, but this little spot right here on his hat brim, just I'm not sure exactly what it's supposed to be and it just looks odd to me. So let's see how it looks if we take that out. I'm gonna use the eraser tool to do this and you certainly could use the pencil tool. They would both work very similar. When I click the eraser tool, you'll notice over on the side, I have that same little color picker eyedropper I'm going to click that and then you'll notice that what we have are different sizes of eraser. This tiniest one here will always be that size no matter how much you zoom or in or out of your design, which is really nice when you need a very, very precise control. So in this case, I think this one here will probably work just fine. And in this case, it's black, and I'm going to make it the background color, so I'm going to select the red as my color. You'll notice the eraser has turned red over here, indicating what color I'm going to be erasing with. And you'll see that when I bring my mouse pointer back over to the design, it's now a little square, just like it was when we were in the Merge Colors tool. So I'm going to go ahead and go over the top of this, and you can hover over it and click multiple times just like you do in the pencil or you can click and draw over the top of it with a single click and in this case i'm actually kind of using the mouse as a painting tool and i think that actually looks a lot better it's not distracting to my eye so i'm going to be happy with that so we can go ahead and we can turn off our tool and at this point, I think that that looks really nice. 
um, compared to what it started with. Let's just run it through the Merge Colors tool just really super quick, and then you can see we have those five colors, and I'm just going to click to make sure I don't have any weird outlying dots just to make sure nothing needs to be cleaned up. Okay, now here, there is a little dot here. So let's go ahead and despeckle that. Actually, I'm not going to despeckle that. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to use my little eraser tool here because it took some off from over here and I don't want it to do that. So I'm just going to, oops, I think I need to, I think I need to undo that. And actually, that's a little, that actually, as I'm looking at it, is a little dot in uh, of highlight in his eye. And that actually should be white. So I think probably the best thing, and actually it probably won't even show, so I'm not even gonna worry about it. I was gonna change it to white, but I'm not gonna worry about it because but when you stitch this, probably that won't even show because it's only gonna be one or two stitches. We'll look at this one, looking at it closely, it looks good and the white we're not going to be able to see. So I am pretty happy with how this design has come out. So at this point, we'll go ahead and do our save as. And again, this is in my folder so that I know it's where I want it to be. And I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite what I did because I am sure I'm happy with it. If you were not sure, you can either change the location or you can change the file name. And I would suggest if you're going to change the file name, change it to something that you know what it's going to be. So in this case, if I wanted to be sure, I can say that it's the villain with artwork. Um, and that would be very precise at cluing me in when that was saved. It was after the artwork was done. Um, if I wanted to do that with the image after I did the color reduction, you can say villain color reduction so that you would know what those particular files are. So I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to go ahead and overwrite it because I'm happy with it. Now we're going to go ahead and close this and we're going to open our dinosaur and this is in my, my folder with the color reduction. So I'm going to open the dinosaur, and if you remember, the dinosaur had a lot of work that needed to be done with it. Let's get this zoomed in here so we can, we can all see what we're doing here. Okay, put that down, get it centered. All right, now remember, we didn't take this through the Merge Colors tool very far. Um, we did, in fact, I think we completely backed out of it. Um, we have this down to 24 colors, which is still too many. I think we decided there should be like six to seven colors. So we're going to use some of the art tools to actually help us with some color reduction in this case. So remember that the back arm and the back leg are both a darker green, as are the spots from the rest of the dinosaur. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring up that bucket tool. And here I'm going to show you what this color matching tolerance setting is. What you'll do, the first thing, is click that eyedropper, come over, and we're you'll see there's lots of little dots in here. I'm going to try to find a solid spot to click this. And you'll see the color comes into here. And if I were to leave this at zero, the only thing that bucket will change are joining dots that are that exact color, which really isn't going to help us. And just to illustrate, I'm not sure if you can see those little dots. And actually, it did it did clean up some of it, but you'll still, still see that there's quite a few little dots in there. So I'm going to go ahead and click Undo. And we're just going to play with this. We want this to get as cleaned up as we can without having to click multiple times. So I'm going to just bring this up just a little bit and you'll see that this is the original color and it's going to take into account anything that's between those two colors on the scale. So now I'll click and we've cleaned up more but we still have this little outline around the inside. So let's undo and we'll bring this up a little further. And the nice thing about this is once you've, if you've got multiple areas 
once you figured out what the setting for one of the same color, all you have to do is click the other areas. Okay, and I'm looking very closely, and that cleaned up that very, very nicely. So now I can just go to this back leg and click it, and you can see that that's nicely cleaned up as well. And let's go ahead and do the color picker, and we'll go in and get the color for the spots up here. You'll notice that I'm going to undo my tool here so I have my regular mouse pointer just for a moment. You'll notice that some of these spots do not have outline all the way around. When you're using the bucket fill tool, if you have an area that is not bounded by a complete outline or a complete different color, that may actually allow your change to bleed into another area. So we're going to be very careful with that and, and hopefully that will actually happen for us so that I can illustrate that for you. So we're going to leave this right over here at the zero and let's go ahead and actually pick the dinosaur because there's a few little spots outlying in here too. And that one we didn't need to change this because the colors were so similar. There are still a few over here by, right by the tail. Kind of hard to point with that bucket tool. We're going to just bring this up just a little bit and we'll try it again. Okay, that's a little bit better but it still didn't really clean it up as well as I'd like. So I'll just move it up a little more. And that's better but not quite there. And I'm also watching those spots as I'm doing that because I don't want those to change especially ones where they don't have the, the um, outline all the way around. And that cleaned that up very nicely. You'll notice that all the little spots along the tail are gone. We still have, but look at what we've lost here. We've lost the color in that particular spot. This is going to be something that will be up to you, whether, I mean, you're the designer here, so you need to decide is the color in that spot necessary to you or can you live without it? Or maybe we should go back and put a border around that before we do this color change and then do the color. So let's go ahead and grab the pencil tool real quick. And we'll pick our color of our outline, which is black. And we want the very smallest pencil here. And I'm just going to click a few little dots in here. And that should bound that enough that it's not going to do up any changes on the rest of our design here. And I'm going to do this one up here too because it was very, very faint. And that looks like it probably will do it. So we'll go ahead and turn off our pencil. We'll go back to our bucket. And... I'm going to go ahead and move this up. And of course, I don't remember what setting I had because I didn't look. So we'll go ahead and play with it again. And that wasn't enough. Oops. You can grab that slider with your mouse or you can just click in an area if you need to go quite a distance. Okay, that cleaned it up very nicely. And you'll notice now we still have the color in the spot up here. Um, so use that slider, play around with it, see what it does for you. We're going to go next. We've got this, this green has been cleaned up. This green has been cleaned up. The blue looks like it's pretty good. You can always just do a fill on it, and if there's anything there, it will take care of it. Or you can use that through the color reduction tool. The other spot that didn't get done was the red up here. So we're going to go ahead and get that color picker and pick a red. And at this point, I don't really care what red it is. And we'll bring this back down and we'll just bring it up just a little bit. And it's very hard to see, but there are darker reds kind of surrounding. If you remember from when we were using the um, Merge Colors tool, that kind of had an outline along that black. So let's go ahead and click that. And that actually cleaned up very nicely. But you'll see this area down here did not do anything. That's because it sees that as a separate section. 
because this little area right here has darker pieces in it than what this will pick up. So you can do one of two things. You can undo, change your color matching tolerance up a little bit, and that should take care of it, and it would take out these as well. Or you can just come in this section and click it and clean that separate section up, and that's usually what I do. Um, let's go ahead and grab the white, and we'll clean up the eye. And if I had upped the color matching, it probably would have done a little better job, so I guess we can do that. That looks a little better. And let's go ahead and grab the red. While I was in the red, I should have gotten the eyes as well, the eye and the nose as well. Not a problem. We'll go ahead and grab that color again. And let's go ahead and try that color matching and see what it does. Okay, that wasn't enough. I can undo it. I'll go back up a little bit. And also, you can, you can click multiple times. You don't have to just click once. You can move that point of where that paint is and click again. That actually looks pretty good. Next, let's go. We've got this pretty well cleaned up. Oh, I didn't do the spots. Got to do the spots. So let's go ahead and pick the color. And I'm going to go in here and fill each one, being real careful where that little point of the... This actually could go up just a little bit more. Being very, very careful where the point of that bucket is, where the paint drip is. And watching very carefully for what changes. And that looks better. Could be better, but we'll continue with that. Next, let's go ahead and undo that bucket tool. And you can see already that even though I am not done with this, it's looking better. Let's look and see how many colors we are down to. We've eliminated two colors. Not a lot, but it is cleaned up quite a bit. Um, a lot of those spots were of the same color. So even just reducing it by a couple colors and having a more solid design is a good thing. Next, we're gonna go ahead and use the pencil tool again. You'll, you'll I think you'll find that you use your eraser, your bucket, and your pencil way more than you do your brush. I, I rarely ever use the brush. We're going to go in and we're going to touch up these lines in the mouth. We're going to do the ones around the nose. And we've already done the ones around the spots. And we're going to basically do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a outline color here, being what the black. I have this set for the smallest. You can see which one is selected by which one has the little dotted outline around it. So I tend to almost always work with the very smallest one, just so I have very precise control. And just for the sake of being able to see what I'm doing and having a little more control, and I'm going to zoom that in more, and just be aware I am not an artist, and working with I'm working with a mouse rather than a a pen tool of some sort so this this can be iffy and if you don't like what you come up with you just go back and you redo it now that just doesn't look very good to me I'm gonna go ahead and undo and I'm actually gonna undo that tool as well and remember what I said about the eraser tool being able to draw I'm going to use that and even though I have this zoomed into 670 percent that little eraser tool is still tiny. So I'm going to go ahead and pick my color. And then I'm going to bring this eraser tool over and actually use it to do my drawing. And I'm going to fix that up a little bit right there so it's a little more solid. And whoops, didn't like that. One thing I'm, I tend to not like about the undo tool is it often will undo more than just the last click. So do be aware of that when it, when you do use the 
undo tool. In this case, I got a little bit out, but everything else looks good. So I'm going to change my color to the green. And then I can just go in and I can clean that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in here and clean that is up as well. And there are already a bunch of little spots in there. Whoops. That's okay. I can redraw that in there. I got, I have this nicely and I don't want a chance losing that for doing the undo button. Okay. I need to pick my black. And you'll notice this is putting a very, very small dot of color. So you can get a very precise line if you're, if you're very steady of hand, which I can't say that I am. And if you're artistically inclined, which again, I can't say that I am. We'll go ahead and get the green and we'll clean that little spot right there. And that's not too bad. And if I wanted to play with this for a while longer, I'd probably have something that looked better. But this gives you an idea of what you can do with these tools. I'm going to go ahead and select my black again. And I'm going to touch up this line in the mouth. And again, I can draw by dragging, clicking and dragging. Or you can click individual spots. And this isn't something that's critical, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pink so I can touch this up a little bit and get it a little thinner. Now I need to go back to my black. And don't be afraid to go back and forth between colors. You're, you're creating here. So it's just like putting down one pencil and picking up a different one or a different crayon or a different paint color on your paintbrush if you were doing artwork. I'll go back to my pink and touch this one up just a little bit. And you can see that those lines are a lot more distinct in the, in the tongue now. I'll grab my black one more time and bring that line down just a little farther because I erased a little too much. There, that doesn't look too bad. Um, I think I'll go ahead and leave the spots as they are for now and see how things end up coming out. What I'd like to do at this point is we'll go ahead and take it back to our 370% so it's full on the screen. I'm going to close my tools. And remember that we did not really take this through the merge colors. We ended up backing out of it because we didn't like the way it came out. I'm going to check and see how many colors we have. We're still at 22. And we're going to go ahead and go into the merge colors at this point. Sometimes you may need to do things not in a particular order. And this is a good example of that. I have 22 colors rather than the 24. And now we can go ahead and we can do some despeckling and a little bit more touch up and take things to the point where we feel it's at its best. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to do this very quickly. That is outline. So we're going to merge it. And if you remember, we unselected the one that we were going to merge, hold the shift key, click the one we want to merge, click the merge button, click OK, and then click the one you want to merge it into. And at this point, I'm just going to keep on going through. And that is also outline. So I'm going to do this very quickly since we've already covered this in a different section. And we want that to be black. And that is outlined as well. Oops. Now on that, I just accidentally had the shift key down when I clicked the second color. And what that did was it merged the black into the darker red. And all that did really did was change my outline color. That's not a really a, a problem for me. Um, I can change that to any color I want to later. 
so I'm not going to really worry about that. I could click undo and do it over, but I'm not going to worry about it. That one's outline also. It's just because I was trying to do it quickly and not paying attention. So when you're doing this, make sure you're taking your time and doing it right. And that is outlined as well. After you've done this a while, it's easy to get complacent with knowing what you're doing and then making a little slip up like I just did. Okay, I think we want those two to be the same color rather and then that might be an outline. So let's go ahead and put this one into that one. That looks good. What I don't want is what we had before where we had the outline really heavy up here and kind of spotty elsewhere. This outline actually looks very good. It's, it's pretty even. Um, this area right here will want a little bit of artwork. Check that blue color and that is an outline as well. It seems odd that there will be blue for an outline, but you got to remember this is a very poor quality image to start with. So we'll go ahead and put that one into our outline color. And that still looks very good. I'm, I'm looking at the quality of my outline knowing that that was a problem before. And we have two pinks. And what I'm going, and you'll notice there's a little bit of the mouth right here. And then there's a, mostly the mouth here and then a little bit of speckling out here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two and then I'm going to despeckle. The reason I don't want to despeckle this right here is because I probably will lose this little bit of mouth and I don't want that. So I'm going to undo this. Merge those. And then I will go back and despeckle that. And there's a lot of pink speckles around this. In fact, maybe I'll just despeckle it now. But you'll notice that my mouth is all together at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and despeckle that. And now all I have is that mouth. And you'll see that the number of colors we're down to at this point is considerably less than what we had. These three greens we want to keep because that's the spots those darker legs, and then the main body. So those are okay. We'll have to look at these two. And these we may just want to do speckle because this outline is already pretty good. We don't want to go too far and make it uneven with the rest of it. But we'll go ahead and merge it. Okay, I'm okay with that. And let's go ahead and merge this one as well and see what we get. Because we do have that up there that could be outlined so that this part will help balance those out. So let's go ahead and merge this one. And if we don't like it, we can always go back. Okay, that's not bad. And you'll see that this area right here is actually starting to fill in a little better with our outline. So that's good. And you'll notice this is starting to get a little heavy, but and this is still light. But remember, we have this one that can be outlined as well. So we'll go ahead and merge that. And that still looks very good. So let's see where we are with colors at this point. Okay, the blue needs to be despeckled. Got little outlying spots here, so we're going to go ahead and despeckle that. This will clean up that outline pretty well. The pink we already did. And we'll come back to these lighter colors. And the three greens that we knew we wanted to keep are good. The red is good, and the black is good. So we need to decide at this point, is this color and this color, are they going to be speckled or are they going to be merged? And at this point, I think I probably will just, they look like they're laying to the outside of the design. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and despeckle it. So 
take a look at what it looks like. And I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and despeckle that one. Okay, now this I, this I do not like. So we're gonna go ahead and go back. And we just brought that one color back. We'll go ahead and merge this into whatever it seems to go with. And that looks like the lighter green of the main body of the dinosaur. So this one, this 0.37, is going to want to go into this 20.80. So we'll go ahead and get that merged in. And it's all just a matter of playing with it. I chose something that I didn't like. I undid it, and I went back. So I'm going to go ahead and merge this into that. And that looks better to me. So at this point, let's go through and just check it. There's a couple little spots up here in the eye. I'm not going to worry about those too much. We're going to want to probably go back in and do a little artwork to clean up the outline around the eye. The red looks good. That green looks good. That looks good. There's a couple little spots here. Whoops. That's not going to work. Go ahead and go back. And again, if you do something you shouldn't have, you accidentally click on it with your erate little eraser tool that you automatically get, just click the undo button. Let's go ahead and despeckle this. There's a few little speckles sitting outside of where the main design is. And I think we decided we were going to despeckle that. And again, remember earlier I said that sometimes a few little speckles will show up again. And that can be a result of merging colors or who knows. If you see them appear again, just go ahead and, and clean it up again. And you need to see what that color is. That one I'm going to despeckle because it's all kind of outlying outside of that outline. And then we need to decide what to do with that one. And I think that one wants to be merged. Let me look a little more closely. That one's a tough call. Let's go ahead and merge that one. And if we don't like it, we can always undo it. And this is going to the body of the dinosaur. And that doesn't look too bad. Now, we have this down to eight colors. Down from 22 that we started with. Originally, I believe we had 256 or 255. Um, and it was a very low quality image. This should digitize pretty well. Um, it will still need a little bit of artwork cleaning up some of these outlines to make sure that all those are connected so that the program can go from one to another. So let's go ahead and turn that off and we'll just go ahead and go into, actually I'm going to use the eraser tool because this is a very, very, very small fine line. I'll go ahead and click my outline color and I'm just going to fill that in just by clicking. I, I'm not going to try to do individual colors or I'm sorry, individual uh, I mean, I'm going to do individual clicks rather than just trying to draw because I don't have a very steady hand. It'll be faster for me to do it this way. And I'm just multiple clicking here. And you can see that my outline is starting to become a lot more solid. And it's just a matter of taking the time to go through and just, and it depends on how badly you want the design too. Obviously something that you're just fiddling around with, you're probably not going to take as much time as something that you're making for a child that you know is yours or a grandchild or something where you, you are uh, or trying to sell the design just touching up a couple little areas here and again that's pretty close to being ready to go at this point i don't think that would be too bad when it comes to what it would look like digitized. And I guess we'll find that out when we go to digitize it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my tool and 
I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. I guess I can just do a save because I don't care if I'm overwriting at this point. And actually, I will go ahead and do a save as. Let's just make sure we get it. Go ahead and save. And I'm going to go ahead and overwrite it. And that takes care of our dinosaur. So let me go ahead and close this. And remember the last one we did was our cartoon happy face. And this is the one that I saved that was reduced in color. And I'm going to zoom this in. Probably not that much. There we go. Okay. One thing that we did not do with this design at the end of the color reduction is I never took it into the Merge Colors tool. So I'm going to do that, and we're just going to check for speckles. Obviously, we will not be able to check for speckles in the white, but we can check for them in the black. You'll see there aren't any oddball spots sticking out there where they shouldn't be, and the same with the yellow. So that's good there. I'm going to show you here using the line tool in the pencil. Just I'm not going to actually do anything on the design itself. I will, I'll just show you and then we'll remove it. Um, what you do is just go and click line. And we'll just go ahead and click a different width so you can see the different widths also. This allows you to draw a nice straight line from one point to another. And I'm just going to draw a line like from here down just so you can see. I'm going to click and hold, and then I just bring that line wherever I want it to be, and when I get it to where I want it, I just release the mouse button. So you can, you can do all kinds of free form designs doing this that way. You can connect them or not connect them however you want to do. We'll go ahead and erase those. That one I had clicked, clicked once and then released it without dragging it anywhere. Um, this also works in the paintbrush tool as well. And I can show you that. Go ahead and select. We've got our paintbrush. And like the bucket tool, the very tip of the tool is what is going to be causing the color. So in this case, the very, very tip of that paintbrush, as opposed to the very, very tip of the drip of the paint, is what's going to be causing that. You'll notice this does the line. We can select different brush widths. So you can make all kinds of abstract geometrics, whatever you'd like to do. Um, if I'm not using... Let me go ahead and move these out of here. If I'm not using the line tool, if I'm using the freehand, you'll notice that it just kind of paints. I'm just doodling. You can do different, different widths. That one really fills in. But it kind of spreads like paint would be off a brush. So let's go ahead and undo those. Just wanted to show you really quickly how that all worked, and that's how you would end up doing the filled geometric shapes. There's the rectangle, and the elliptical would also do the same type of thing. So I want to use the pencil for the eye, so I'm going to go ahead and do my freehand pixels once I've got my pencil selected, and I'm going to be fixing this little area right around the eye just to thicken that up just a little bit. So I want to select my black and we know that this is all the same color so I'll just go down here where it's a large section and I don't have to be real precise and I want my small pencil and remember this stays the same size regardless of how much you are zoomed in or not. So if I wanted something to be smaller I can use the eraser tool. And right now I'm just I'm just kind of 
doodling this in. I'm not doing a very good job of it either. I told you I was not an artist. <laughs> but the idea here is just to get that outline so it's fairly smooth, so it's filled in. I'm going to go in and get my color picker, select the white so I can clean up the inside here. And I'm doing individual clicks here. And now this is bordering the yellow, so I need to change color. So I'm going to come in here. And that looks a lot better. I don't think there will be any problem with the program following that for an outline at this point. And I think this one right here is ready for digitizing. So we'll go ahead and do a save on that. I'm going to save it and overwrite it because I know that I'm okay with it. And that's a pretty good overview on how to use the art tools. I hope that this has been a helpful segment for you and I hope you'll sit down with some images and play with these tools and find out more about what they do. The third and final segment of this video will cover cropping and resizing. Welcome to the final segment of this video. We will be working with the crop and resize tools. I will also demonstrate the reflect and rotate tools as well. On my screen, I already have open our villain that we've been working with. And you'll notice that the red which is the background, extends quite a distance on the sides and a little bit from the top from the actual design that we decided we were going to stitch. Remember I said I didn't care what the background looked like when we were doing the reducing the color part. I'm actually not going to stitch the background. I only want the villain himself. The reason I'm going to go ahead and crop this out is you'll notice down here at the bottom where my mouse is, it tells me what the size of the image is. And in this case, it's just under two inches by a little bit over two and a half inches. That's with this extra red in here, because remember the background is actually considered part of the image. So if I want to be able to resize this to a certain size, I'll need to make sure that I'm measuring from the widest point of the actual part I want to stitch to the widest part that I want to stitch or from the top to the bottom. And that'll be important when you're working with a certain sized hoop. If you have a limitation such as five by seven, you wanna make sure that your largest dimension is not larger than what your hoop can handle or what your machine can handle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop this. Up here at the top, you'll see that there are four tools over here just to the left of the color reduction tools. These tools, I'll give, go over them in order. This is the rotate tool. This is the reflect tool. This is the resize tool. And this is the crop tool. The rotate function will allow you to actually rotate your image 90 degrees at a time, and I'll demonstrate that later. The reflect will allow you to flip the image left to right. And that will allow you to make mirror images if you'd like to do that. Resize, just what it says, it's going to allow you to resize up or down your image size. And the crop tool allows you to remove part of your image. And that's what we're going to do first. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my crop tool. And you'll notice around the outside, there are some little black dots in the corners and the centers of each side. You'll also notice that the outside edge is turned into kind of a hash marked line. That means that you have the crop tool open and you'll notice over here on the right, you also have some information here. If you decide you did not want to crop and you accidentally clicked it or you just changed your mind, there's a little X over here on the far right side and that is how you close this tool. 
You'll also see right here that it gives you what your original size was and what size you've taken it down to. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I want to go just to the outside edge of his mustache because that's the far left side of the image that I'm going to be stitching. So I'm just clicking my mouse on that little black button. You'll notice my cursor, my mouse pointer, has changed to a double pointed arrow. When that happens, that means that you're ready to grab it with your mouse. So I'm going to hover over that spot with the double sided arrow. I'm going to click my left mouse button and I'm just dragging as I'm holding that mouse button down. You don't want to get too close because you may end up cropping part of your image out. And if you do, you can always click that undo button. So I'm going to go ahead and release this here. And you can see I've got a little spot right there in between, so that's good. I'll come back up to the top and come just down to the top of his hat. That looks good. And this side will be able to take quite a bit out. So we're going to come over here and hover over that and drag it right in and release. And I don't want to bring anything up from the bottom. And you, there is a black dot if I hover over where I think the center is. You'll see my pointer has changed to a double pointed arrow. It's just because it's black on black and you cannot see it. You can also grab these corners and that will bring the whole side in. I can bring it back out like that. But you do have to be careful to watch both of those lines when you're bringing it in. Make sure you don't get one side too much. That looks good right there. And you'll see over here on the right side in this, in this box that it now says my crop size is 1.67 inches by 2.5. So I now have two and a half inch high image, but I considerably narrowed it. And this gives me a good idea of what my proportion is as well as what my finished size is. So to complete doing the cropping, you go back up to the crop tool and you click it again. And then you can see all of your cropping has taken place. Just double check, make sure you haven't cut anything off that you wanted. And that looks good to me. You'll notice down here at the bottom that the size has changed also once that has been committed. And I think I want to change this to a five by seven because I don't want just a tiny, tiny little guy. I want a pretty good size one. I think I'll probably put him on a sweatshirt. So I'm going to go up here to my resize tool and click on it. And you'll get this little box. And you'll want to almost always have this box that says lock aspect ratio checked. What this does is it makes sure that when you change one number, that the other number goes in proportion to it. If you don't do that, you'll have something that's all stretched out of proportion with, with it. And we'll actually show you this really quick also. In fact, I'll just do that right now so that you can see. If I decide to make this five inches, you notice that the height does not change. So when I commit this, my image is going to end up being five inches wide by two and a half inches high, and it's going to look very odd. Definitely not what we wanted. So if you see something like that, make sure you have that box checked. I'm going to go ahead and click the undo button, put him back to normal, click my resize button, and it looks like that's probably a default, which is good. So just make sure you leave that checked. And we know that this is 1.65 and we know that this is 2.52. And I also know what my five by seven hoop measurements are exactly. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in a five here because my hoop is 5.12 by 7.09. Now you'll notice that the height is 7.62. Well, 7.62, is bigger than what my 7.09 hoop can handle. So I'll need to reduce this just a little bit. And actually, since we know that this is wrong, we'll just go ahead and we'll make this a little bit smaller than the 7.09 and we'll just make it 6.95. 
And what that does is it automatically adjusts the other dimension. So you can use this to make things fit your hoop just right. And now that we know that my width is less than 5.12 and my height is less than 7.09, I know that will fit my five by seven hoop. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay. And this has been zoomed in a lot. So we'll go ahead and we'll back that off. I'll bring that back up a little bit so you can see it. And this is just slightly enlarged from what we actually will have when it's stitched. So we're all set with that one. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and make a new folder really quickly. And we'll call this images ready for digitizing because these are all ready to go at this point. So we'll go ahead and we'll save our villain in there. And we'll go ahead and close him because he's all set. And now we'll go ahead and bring that dinosaur and bring that one in. And this one, you can see he's already pretty small. And I think I want to do this one in a four by four. I think it would look cute on a onesie or a young child's t-shirt. So this is 100%. Let's go ahead and zoom this in so we can see what we're doing. Oops, that's too far. There, that's better. Now what we're going to do this has a white background anyway, and it's kind of really difficult to see on a white background what exactly is your background versus the screen of so of so art. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here with my bucket tool, and I'm just going to pick a random color, and we'll just do purple. And we know that this is all a solid color, and just temporarily I'm going to fill this area with a color. And what this does is it shows me exactly where all of my boundaries are. The boundaries aren't necessarily this line. You'll notice that the line is wider than the actual image. And if you tried to crop this, you probably would end up cropping off part of the design. And we don't want to do that. So we'll just do a very small amount of cropping here just so we can get an accurate size. We're just going to bring each of these down and in, just like we did before, hover over that little black dot till it turns to a double pointed arrow, click your mouse and drag it up. Just be careful not to go too far. That looks like it might be a little too far, so let me undo that. And we'll go over to this other side and we'll crop that in. And you'll notice that our size is 2.48 by 2.46. And I've made it into 2.42 by 2.41. Not a really huge difference, but it'll get me closer to my 4 by 4 that I want to have. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this. And I'll go back and I will fill this back with white. Now that I know I have it cropped properly, turn off my bucket tool. And now I'm going to go to my resize. And my four by four hoop is 3.94 by 3.94. And I wanna have it just a hair under that so that I don't have any issues with the machine reading it. So I'm gonna do 3.80. And then we'll click okay. And you'll see that we have resized it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom this back out. And now he's been resized. But I think I want to have him facing the other direction when the design is all ready to stitch. And I can certainly do this in So What Pro as well. But let's just go ahead and digitize in the way I think I want him to be facing. So I want him to be facing to the right. So I'm going to go up here to the Reflect tool. And I'm going to click on it. And voila, he's facing the other way. And he's ready to go. And that's all there is to that. So let's go ahead and do a save as. 
and we're going to put him into the images ready for digitizing and save him and then we'll close and we'll go ahead and get our cartoon happy face here and bring him in and I, just like I did before, we're going to go ahead and change this color. We'll use hot pink this time just for something different. Get close to the image. And you can see this is cropped in really super tight. So this one does not need any cropping. If you were to crop this, you would end up losing part of your design. So since I haven't left the tool, I'm just going to do undo. Since I know I don't need to do any cropping on this. And we'll go ahead and resize him. And this one I want to do a 4 by 4 also. So 3.80 just to be on the safe side because that also makes this one 3.86. So that will work just fine. Go ahead and click that. And this is pretty much exactly, whoops, that's zoomed in too. I'm not sure why when you open a design that's been zoomed, from one that's been zoomed before, why it does that, but it does. So just keep an eye on your zoom tool. This should be the actual size of the design once it is digitized. And at this point, I'll show you how to do the rotate. It's very simple. If you wanted him to be face or turned sideways for some reason, you can also do this in So What Pro after you are done with your digitizing. You just click the click the little button one one click at a time. We'll turn it 90 degrees, and there's no way to change how much it rotates it's always 90 degrees and it always is the same direction when he turns so get him back to normal there and that's pretty much all there is to doing the rest of this um, for the cropping the resizing the reflect and the rotate very simple so we'll go ahead and do a save as and we're going to put that in my ready for digitizing folder. And that's all saved. And now I can close. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. I hope that you have found it helpful and informative. You are invited to join the SoArt Digitizing group on Facebook. It's a great place to ask questions and get advice about using SoArt. A link to this group will be included in the description of the video on YouTube. Happy digitizing!